You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, and all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Frigidaire. Now, Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. I tell you, Ken, this thing has to be stopped. Thousands of lives are at stake, man. Stop pounding the desk, Chief, and tell me about it. I just got in from Calcutta this morning, remember? Oh, good Lord, Ken, of course. This thing has me so worked up, I, uh... uh, Look, uh, take a look at this wall map. You see this town in Arizona, near the Mexican border? No guile is? What about it? Well, somewhere down there, a deadly plague is spreading. And it could run wild over the whole country. Smallpox. Smallpox? Six deaths down there in the past week and a half. Other cases being reported almost daily. Uh, Last year, it popped up in California. A few months ago, here in New York. Now it's down there near Nogales. It's anybody's guess where it'll hit next. Any idea where the carriers are coming from? Four of the six dead men down there appeared in the territory only a couple of weeks ago. They carried no American papers or identification. And the Mexican border only a broad jump away. Right. Somebody smuggling aliens across the border, and they're smuggling in the smallpox. So long, Chief. Right now, Dr. Clark, you were the physician who reported the last case here in Nogales, weren't you? Yes, but I don't know anything more about the dead man than you do, Mr. Thurston. Neighbors called me in. He was delirious when I got there. When he did talk, it was Spanish. Nothing made him much sense. Just kept repeating over and over, El Castillo Blanco, El Castillo Blanco. Apparently, it holds no clue whatever as to the man's identity or origin. In other words... Dr. Clark, I don't know what to do. The patient in the examination room, he... Well, listen to it. All right, nurse, I'll be right in. Won't take long, Thurston. I'll be here, Clark. Hmm. El Castillo Blanco. I wonder. Frank, darling. Oh, darling, I've missed you so much. I... Oh, oh. But you're not Dr. Clark. No, but don't let that stop you. <laughs> oh, my apologies. The sun was so bright outside and it's so dark in here. For a moment, I was blinded. I... Oh, please forgive me. Well, that was almost the nicest introduction I've ever had. Why should I forgive you? (laughs) Thank you. May uh, I know the name of the man to whom I've almost introduced myself? Ken Thurston. Dr. Clark is busy with the patient. I'm Estelle Carroll, Mr. Thurston. Oh, they're waiting for me outside. Would you be kind enough to deliver a message to Dr. Clark for me? Anything like the one you almost delivered? (laughs) This time it's only an invitation, Mr. Thurston. I'm having some guests at my rancho for the weekend. I wanted him to come down. Lucky man, I'll tell him. Of course. Any friends of Dr. Clark's are more than welcome, too. Anyone in town could tell them the road to the White Castle, my hacienda. Hasta la vista, Ken Thurston. Hasta la vista, Senorita Caro. Hmm, well. Help! Police! What the devil? Try to hold his arm still, nurse. I, I am, doctor, but, but he won't. Who? Oh, are you stopping me? You, you're cutting off my arm. Just one second and... There. It's all over. All over, eh? I have no arm left. I'll sue you for every cent I have. Hang on. Oh, hello, Mr. Thurston, and I'll take you to the Superior Court, to the Supreme Court, even to the Justice of the Peace. I'll... Oh, 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 Mr. Thurston. Relax, Pagan. It wasn't a major operation. <laughs> that just goes to show you how much you know about it. Do you know what these butchers were doing to me? I could guess. All right, go ahead. I was being vaccinated. Well, what, uh, what else are you doing in Nogales? I'm down here on big business, Mr. Thurston. I... Never mind, never mind. I'll hear about it later. What? <laughs> you had a visitor, Dr. Clark. Oh, who was it? A Miss Caro. Estelle, I'm sorry I missed her. Well, I can see why. She um, invited us down to her rancho for the weekend. Oh? I didn't know you and Estelle were acquainted. We'll add that to the list. But 
What list? Of things you don't seem to know about her. I'm afraid I don't understand. What's the name of her hacienda, Clark? Why, it's... Oh. Yeah. The White Castle. In Spanish, El Castillo Blanco. like an aeroplane. No wonder. You haven't had more than one wheel on the road since we left Nogales. <laughs> Why were you so set on driving me out to Senorita Caro's? Oh, strictly business. With a guest of hers. And how much is your chauffeuring going to cost me? Not one penny. Outside of gas and oil and normal depreciation on the car. Maybe a few incidents <coughs> like that. <coughs> Mr. X, what happened? There's your answer, Pago. Oh, for a moment I thought somebody was shooting at us. <gasps> oh, somebody is. Hit the gas. If we can make that next bend in the road. Ah, there goes the tire. You know something, Mr. Thurston? We didn't make it. I don't get it. Why would anyone want to shoot up my pretty automobile? Somebody didn't want us to get to the rancho. I'd still like to know where those shots came from. <laughs> you could hide an elephant in these mountains. Wait a minute, Pego. Huh? Well, still, senores. You're in trouble? Senor Virva, it's you. Senor Zellschmidt. Come esta usted, senor. Buena, senor Virva. Very much buena. <laughs> Mr. Thurston, meet my good friend, senor Virva. Glad to know you, Senor Weber. It is my pleasure, Senor. But what has happened to you, walking in this lonely country? Car trouble. On our way to the White Castle Rancho. Oh, <laughs> and the rancho is still some miles away. But I am a guest there also. Why do you not wait in that shady Aurora while I ride for horses for you? If you could add a well chilled martini to that formula, Weber, it'd be perfect. <laughs> bueno, I shall uh, see that one is waiting for you upon your arrival at the Hacienda. Patience, amigos. I will be back pronto. You see, Mr. Thurston, it pays to know men like me. Influential friends all over the world. Yeah, I've met some of them. Oh, that's right. <laughs> but Senor Vera is different. A, a lovely fellow. He wouldn't hurt even a fly. I figured that. He did? Yeah. He wasn't carrying that high-powered rifle just to hunt down flies. <laughs> Rancho, I think, is the most beautiful, Ken. Do you, Estelle? Yes. Especially now at sunset. That's why I have that small cabin down there to come to when I wish quiet and solitude. Uh, too few places I got on the face of the earth today, aren't there, Estelle? Yes, I know. But here, the snow-capped peaks above, the brilliant colors of the canyon below. Like a sword wound cut deep into the breast of the earth. A wound dividing two nations. On this side is Arizona. On the other, Mexico. Mm -hmm. That canyon is called La Calle de las Perdidas, the street of the lost ones. Many have tried to cross from one side to the other. But the rock walls are a thousand feet straight up and down. Nobody's ever come out alive. I can believe that. And the two white sandstone buttes on either side of the canyon, like two white castle towers. That explains how your rancho got its name. Oh, hmm. yes. Our nature's made this country strong, hard, ruthless. <coughs> Ken! Somebody's ideas about that cabin are different from yours. Come on. Dirty rat talk. Oh, the most savage, senor. 
No, Sappy, no. No, Sappy, you. No, you. What were you doing hanging around here? Come on, talk. No, senor. No, I... <coughs> Maybe you can't talk English, pal. I'm not taking any chance. Let him. Let's have that gun. What? Let's have it. Before you hurt somebody. Let go my arm before I... Let go. Sure, any minute now. Okay, okay. Grab it, Estelle. I have it, Ken. Good. <laughs> okay, mister. What was the big idea of that? Funny, that's my question. You're getting no answers from me. I think we shall, Platt. But, uh... Okay. Okay, Miss Carroll. I saw that peon sneaking around up here, and I pumped some lead in the air to stop him. I cornered him outside the cabin when he wouldn't talk about what he was doing. I was going to scare him a little, that's all. Yeah, you're pretty handy with guns, Platt. Ever do any hunting? Stay between here and Nogales? Sometimes. Have any luck your last time out? I spotted a couple of rattlesnakes. But I missed. Not too bad. Yeah. Maybe I'll have better luck next time. Nice people you have around here. Who is this guy, Platt? He is what you might call a gang boss for Senor Virva. Handles the oil drilling operation. You know, he was drilling for more than oil here. Where is the uh, payon? I'd like to have a talk to that man. He ran away while you were fighting. Do you know who he is? Oh, no one. Just a man who helps store the beef for us. Uh-huh. Oh, well, I'll talk to him in the morning. No, Ken. I want you to leave this rancho tonight. Oh, well, why? It's too dangerous for you here. The shooting on the road, Platt, who's a killer. There's no telling what else may happen to you. Would you rather guess why I'm so unpopular? I don't have to guess, Ken. There are people everywhere, even down here, to whom the most dangerous man in the world, the man called X. <laughs> Mr. Thurston, I don't understand it. Ever since we got here, you've been avoiding me like, like the small part. It's a habit I should have acquired earlier in life. <laughs> a fine attitude to take after all you've gone through for me. Come on, we're going in here. Huh? But that's the ice house where they keep their meat. Yeah. There's a Mexican pay on who works in here. I want to talk to him. Mr. Thurston, why did you let that door slam shut? Now, now, now it's only cold here. It's pitch black. Wait till I unlimber this flashlight. Wow. Ah, look at all those dead cows hanging here. Hmm. I I'll take that one. Medium rare with French fried... <laughs> Mr. Thurston, I got to find the door. What happened to the door? Easy, Pega. But, Mr. Thurston, that cow hanging there... That's no cow. It's the Mexican payer. Uh, this time somebody didn't miss. <laughs> Turn to Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Estelle Caro's guests are all assembled in the living room of her hacienda, and Dr. Clark is speaking. I'm afraid there's no telling how long the man's been dead, Thurston. The cold in the ice house ruined any chance of determining the advance of rigor mortis. No, that means no checkable alibis. And you can't tell a killer without his alibi. Surely, Senor Thurston, you're not suggesting that one of us... That's... Your idea, Vapor, not mine. I don't like your attack, Thurston. No man likes death, Dr. Clark. Whether it's from bullets or smallpox. Smallpox? Frank, didn't you say you had something to tell Ken about that? Yes, Estelle. Just before I left Nogales, Thurston, I learned that a smallpox epidemic has been raging in Masagua for the past 60 days. Masagua? Yes, it's a little Mexican town just across the border. Aha. Uh -huh. My uncle Ahmed has a third cousin twice removed who lives there. I might have known. Well, thanks for your hospitality, Estelle. Thanks for my... Ken, you're not leaving. That was your advice, remember? I'm taking it. <laughs> well, I didn't think it was like you to quit in the middle of a game. Well, sometimes it's smart to quit when you're winners. If you don't believe me, ask the payon. I don't want to cash in my chips with a bullet in my head.
Yeah. Hello, Nagali. It's ready on your call to New York. Go ahead, please. Hello, that you, Ken? Yeah, Chief. What have you got for me? Everything I could get in the 24 hours you gave me. Okay, shoot. Well, first of all, this man, Vierba. He's a crook. Been selling fake Mexican oil stock for years. Made a lot of dough at it once, but uh, right now he's pretty shaky financially. Mexican headquarters in Masagua? Well, how did you know? Maybe I'm psychic. What about Platt? Dishonorable discharge from the Coast Guard. Nothing else. And uh, Dr. Clark's record is absolutely clean. Uh-huh. As for Estelle Caro, she must be quite a woman. You must be psychic, too. Evan and uh, Horatio Alger, from uh, chorus girl to property holder and ranch owner. Came up the hard way, but fast. An old friend of Verva's? Uh, very old and uh, very good. Hey, she hang on, Chief. Be right back. Well, Verva, come all the way to Nogales just to make a phone call? Uh, why not, Thurston? Then why not use the telephone? It works better than here against the wall of this booth. Or does it? Uh, that depends upon what one wishes to hear. Uh-huh. Well, have you heard enough? I think so. At least I have heard enough to offer you some good advice. That's the habit people are getting into. What's yours? Simply this. In the event you're thinking of visiting Masagua, remember... There are other things on foreign soils that can be just as deadly as smallpox. But how do you know I want to go to Mexico? Well, that's better than going to jail for selling fake oil stock. That's besides the point. Uh, uh, anyway, why do you want me to fly to Masagua with you? So you can ask your Uncle Ahmed's third cousin twice removed if he can sneak you into the United States. But why should I do that? I just came from there. Besides, they have smallpox in Masagua. Yeah, that's why we're going there. To see that they keep it. Lonesome. You would like company, no? Yeah, only I didn't realize it until just now. Sit down, won't you? Gracias. You are a stranger here in Masagua? Temporarily, yes. Oh? Then you do not intend to remain? Not if I can help it. But maybe I'll have to. You know how it is sometimes. I am not so certain that I do, senor. But you are American, no? Uh-huh. Your country is not far away. And yet you remain here in Mexico, where you say you do not wish to be. That makes sense to you? Perhaps, senor. Perhaps not. But I enjoy stories. Tell me more. Okay. Um, I know one about a man who wanted to get back to the house where he was born. Mm -hmm. But for certain reasons, its doors were barred against him. And the walls were too high to climb. See, si, senor. What is the end of the story? Well, that's all I know. I never did hear the rest of it. Oh, what a pity. For well, that story could have had a happy ending. Oh? Si, senor. For if that man had money, $1,500 American money, maybe he could have found people to remove those walls for him. Maybe. But what if he didn't know where to find them? Perhaps that could be arranged, senor. Spotlights on these transactions. Senor? Oh, that's American for it's dark here. Oh, I see. Ah, but we have arrived. Go in, senor. No lights here either. Now what? Just this. Uh... So. <laughs> you would not listen to me in Ogales, eh? Perhaps this will teach you I mean what I say, Mr. X.
Wake up, Mr. X. Please, wake up. Uh, yeah. Don't stay subconscious. Wake up. What, uh, what's going, Pago? Oh, glad to see me, Mr. Thurston. Mm, for once, yes. Oh, where are we? In the old building uh, where Senor Verva left you. Verva, so he was the one. Mm-hmm. I knew darn well that girl was leading me into a trap, but I didn't expect it to close so soon. Oh. How'd you get here? I saw you uh, and the girl leave the tavern, so I followed. I thought maybe she might have a friend up for me. Oh. Uh, and when you went to the building, I waited, and uh, Verva and the girl came out. I went in, and here you were. Well, how'd you make off with Uncle Ahmed's kinfolk? Oh, Mr. Thurston, they're the souls of the earth. For $2,000, I can get you sneaked into the United States. Is the extra 500 your commission? Huh? When do I leave? Well, one bunch left tonight, but too early. You missed them. Oh, no, I didn't. Come along. But, Mr. Thurston, you, you can't catch up with them now. I'm not going to. I'm going to meet them at the other side. Surprised? That you've returned to my rancho? No. Only that you found me out here at my little cabin. How did you know? Well, there was no one at the hacienda, and moonlit nights are made for quiet and solitude. Ah, so you remembered. I knew you'd be back. But tell me, Ken, why? Don't you know? I should like to think it was because of me. Was it, Ken? That's why I came back, Estelle. That was a rifle shot. Not from any ordinary rifle. What do you mean? The spotted plague is paying a return visit, Estelle, to the White Castle. Come on. We can see all right from here. But what is that? Ken, look. Yeah. There's something stretching all the way across the canyon. What is it? That's a bridge. A bridge of rope and slats. How is that possible? The shot we heard was a lifeline being fired across the canyon. The kind they use in the Coast Guard. And there's the man who fired it. Pulling it back to this side with the bridge attached. And those men on the other side are waiting to cross. Uh, without benefit of quota or medical examination. That's 1,500 bucks ahead. Ken, he's starting to fasten down the bridge now. Yeah. Okay, Pat, it's quitting time. What the? Tristan! That's right, Pat. I see you having company tonight. May I join the little party? You just dealt yourself into a game you can't win, Tristan. Better look around before you call, Pat. Up in the hills. In the hills? What are you talking? Those lights moving down this way. The Border Patrol. Border Patrol? I made arrangements in Nogales. Dr. Clark's leading him down to us. You all licked, Pat? Oh, no. You haven't won yet, Thurston. That while this gun is still the Joker. Ken! Not tonight, Pat. Uh, Ken! Oh, Ken, I was afraid he was going to kill you. Were you? Or were you afraid he wasn't? What are you saying? You were the brains behind Pratt. I suspected that ever since the ambush on the road. No, Ken. Only you and Clark knew I was going to your hacienda. That it was Clark or Verba. If Verba was a killer, I'd never have left Masagua alive. And you were the only one who knew I wanted to question the peon. You'd smuggled him across the border and couldn't risk that talk. So you killed him. You have no proof of that. When they try to pin a murder rap on Platt, he'll talk. Curse! Curse, Mr. Thurston! Hold on to everything! I'm coming to the rescue! Anything to say, Estelle? Before they get here? You're a clever man, Ken. My congratulations. But you've forgotten one thing. The bridge. Bridge? To Mexico. To freedom. Adios, Ken. Come back, will you? That bridge isn't fastened down yet. Hasta la vista, Ken. Until we... Good Lord. Mr. Rex, the bridge, that girl, they're gone. Yeah. Yes, La Calle de las Perdidas. The street of the lost ones. She was heading there all the time. 
Only she didn't know it. She worshipped the gods of power and ruthlessness. Traded her soul to them. That's why she ended down there. For all those who put gold above human rights and welfare. All of them are lost ones. <laughs> Frigid Air Star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, a story called The Least of These. I read it. It's pretty exciting. I think you'll like it. Of course, Leon Belasco will be on hand as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. And so until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Thursday... For the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.